welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis in this lecture we will discuss kirchhoff's laws in the frequency domain so we have seen the kirchhoff's laws in the time domain uh, for the dc circuits now we see the kirchhoff's laws in the frequency domain first uh, we'll see the kirchhoff's voltage law and then we'll go to kirchhoff's current law we know that the algebraic sum of the voltage in a closed loop is equal to zero so the potential drop across each particular elements that will be present in a circuit whether it is a source or a load the sum of all the voltages will be equal to zero now these voltages are basically in the time domain so we can represent each voltage in the form of the maximum magnitude with the cosine of the phase angle the frequency of each of the voltage drop will remain the same however there may be a difference between the maximum uh, amplitude and the phase angle so phase angle may be difference of the voltage drop due to the presence of resistance inductance and capacitance in the circuit we can represent the time domain quantities in the frequency domain with the incorporation of e to the power j omega t so here we have the time domain as well as frequency domain because both omega is there as well as t component is there that is the time domain component if we do little bit of mathematics here to determine the quantities in terms of the phasor form then we will see that the sum of the voltage in the phasor format is also summing up to zero it means that algebraic sum of all the voltage in a closed loop is zero even when we are representing this in the form of phasor so in phasor format also the kvl law holds good now for the kcl applying the same concept we can have in the time domain as well as in the frequency domain the same concept that is the algebraic sum of all the current that is meeting at a particular node is equal to zero so here we will be having the algebraic sum of all the voltage at a particular loop that is a closed mess is equal to zero here we have algebraic sum of all the current at a particular node is zero both in the time domain format as well as in the frequency domain format where it is basically in the form of the phasor now next topic we see the impedance combi combinations impedance can be combined in the form of a series or parallel let us go for the series where z1 z2 to zn are basically the impedance of each of the elements that are present in the network and v being the supply voltage so this voltage is basically the ac voltage which will be represented in the form of root mean square quantity the voltage will be represent in the form of phasor and v1 v2 and to vn is basically the voltage drop across each particular elements the current drawn from the source is i so all these quantities we will be representing in the form of phasor then from the kvl we can write in the form of equation where the source voltage is equal to sum of all the voltage that is drop across the load and from the ohms law we can segregate the voltage as the product of current multiplied with the impedance since it is a series circuit so the current will remain the same throughout the network the equivalent impedance we can obtain as the ratio of the input voltage by input current which is basically the sum of all the impedances which are present in the network so here we can see that it is similar to the resistance combination in series which we have learned in for the dc circuit here instead of resistance we are dealing with the impedance now if the impedances are connected in parallel so there will be a division of the current through each particular element where the net current is the source current which is coming from the source so in accordance with kcl we can write that all the currents uh, that is being taken by each impedances is equal to the current which is coming from the source now we can represent in terms of ohms law where the potential across each particular element will be same because they are in parallel so we can write taking the common factor as the voltage multiplied with the inverse or the reciprocal of the impedances sum so we can say that 1 by z equivalent 
is basically 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 till 1 by zn. This is similar to what we have studied for the DC circuit where we have only the resistance so 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 dot 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 plus 1 by Rn. So instead of resistance we are simply converting it in the form of impedance. So if you have a resistive network, inductive network or capacitive network or the combination of any of them we can convert that into impedance form. Next topic is voltage division and current division. So in the voltage division if you have a source voltage V which is divided between the two impedances Z1 and Z2 which are in series so the current will remain the same and there will be a voltage division. So here we can obtain the voltage V1 and V2 across a particular impedance in terms of the source voltage V with a factor K. So this factor K we have to obtain. So when we, we want to obtain V1 we have to take the numerator factor as the impedance across which the voltage need to be calculated divided by the sum of all the impedances that are present in the network. Here only two impedances are shown. If you have multiple impedances then we can go like Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 to Zn. Similarly if we want to calculate the voltage 2 then the voltage 2 we will be taking the numerator as Z2 and on the denominator we have Z1 plus Z2 till Zn if we have n number of impedances connected in series. Now the derivation part of this we have already covered in the DC circuit where we have dealt with only the resistance. So the same concept is followed here also only difference is that the resistance is taken as impedance which is the combination of all the parameters that are present in the network. Next we have the current division. So in the current division when we have the parallel circuit the current will be divided and the net current is basically the current which is coming from the source. The voltage remains the same in the parallel connection. So the current we can obtain directly th uh, through each impedances in terms of the source current I with a factor K. Now this time in the numerator we will be taking the impedance which is in parallel to the current where it has to be calculated. For example, if we need to calculate the current I1 flowing through Z1, then we will be taking the parallel of this that is Z2 in the numerator. When we need to calculate the current I2, then we will be taking the impedance which is in parallel through it that is Z1 and on the denominator we will be having all the impedances which are in parallel that is Z1 plus Z2 to Zn. These uh, formulas are given for only two elements. The basic concept remains the same if we have n number of impedances either connected in series or connected in parallel. Next topic we have star delta transformation. So many a times when we need to solve any circuit and we want to reduce it into simpler format we can go for star to delta conversion or delta to star conversion. So here if we have star connected network given to us that is Z1, Z2 and Z3. So that is being given to us and we need to calculate ZA, ZB and ZC then that we have to go for star to delta conversion and the inverse of that that is the delta components are given and we need to obtain the star counterpart then we have to go for delta to star conversion. So the formula here for star to delta conversion or delta to star conversion this formula remain the same that we have studied for the DC circuit where only the resistances are there. So when we need to calculate the value of ZA then here we can see that on the numerator all the factors are same which is the product of two impedances in a circular loop. So we have Z1, Z2 plus Z2, Z3 plus Z3, Z1. This is moving in the circular path which is the product of two impedances. And on the denominator we see when we need to find Z1 then the impedance of the star equivalent which is far from the end which is not the part of the connection of the terminal B and C that will have to be in the 
denominator. Similarly, if we need to calculate ZB, then we see that Z2 is far end from the terminal A and C. So that will be the denominator. Similarly, for ZC, you will be having Z3. So this is the way we can which we can use to remember the delta 2 star conversion. Similarly, for the delta 2 star conversion, if we want to do, we see that denominator part is basically same, which is sum of all the impedances. And on the numerator, we have different quantity. For example, if we need to calculate Z1, then we will be uh, taking the impedances which are on the common path or the common terminal, the product of that two. So if we want to calculate Z1, then we will be taking ZB plus into ZC as the numerator. If we want to calculate Z2, then we take the product ZC into ZA in the numerator and similarly for Z3. So this is star 2 delta or delta 2 star conversion. Let us take one problem to understand the frequency domain concept where we need to determine the input impedance for a circuit which is operating at a frequency of 50 radian per second. Now omega is equal to 2 pi f. So many a times when the frequency will be given in hertz, we can convert that into radian per second. So the first thing that we need to observe is that whether the parameters are all given in ohms or not. So we can have resistance, inductance and capacitance. So resistance is already in ohms. Inductance and capacitance has to be converted into ohms that is inductive reactance and capacitive reactance where inductive reactance is equal to omega into L and capacitive reactance is equal to 1 by omega C. So here the J term will be there to take part the angle because we know that uh, the current and voltage are not in phase with each other in terms of inductance and capacitance and in one the current is lagging the voltage by 90 degree in another one is current is leading the voltage by 90 degree. So this J term is coming from the angle between the current and the voltage. Now here we see that capacitor as well as inductor are all given in their own units of inductance and capacitance that we need to convert into ohms first. So we can deal with the individual impedances Z1 that is the impedance or the reactance of the capacitor Xc. So we have a 2 millifarad capacitor which we can take the impedance as Z1 which we need to determine from the concept 1 by J omega C. We see that the frequency throughout the circuit will remain the same that is 50 radian per second. So we will get the value of Z1. Similarly Z2 is basically the series combination of 3 ohms and 10 millifarad. So first we need to convert this in ohms and then we can add both because both are in series. So we will be obtaining Z2. Now see this is a complex quantity which is having a real part as well as imaginary part due to the presence of the reactance. Z3 is basically the series combination of the register and the inductor. Now inductor value we have to convert it into XL that is inductive reactance and then we can add up. Now we can determine the value of Z in that is the input impedance which is basically the Z1 in summation that is plus of the parallel combination of Z2 and Z3. We will get the input impedance having a real part as well as imaginary part. The absolute value of that will give the magnitude of the imp input impedance and theta is basically the angle of the imaginary part by real part. So many a times we have to deal with the only the magnitude and sometimes we have to deal with the angle also. So in this way we can calculate the circuit which are in time domain we can convert that into frequency domain to apply the theorems. See you in the next lecture.